Keep your eye on him. Because he's, uh, what do you want? Roll the film, Julio. Who used to say that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to make your way near the stage now, we have a whole a series of uh, wonderful interviews for you, starting with uh, the Midnight Movie Crew coming up here with the gentleman who you remember, I'm sure, when he was just a little tyke, very little child actor, uh, and uh, he has come to us now that he's grown up a little bit and uh, just got taller <laughs> and some glasses. <laughs> and uh, to introduce our uh, special guest today, uh, please welcome the gang from the Midnight Movies right here. Thank you. How's everybody doing? Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? My voice is changing. Welcome to Gilardi Fest 7. How's everybody doing out there? It's a great day to be indoors, let me tell you. Goddard always seems to get the good weather for his stuff. Well, anyway. Uh, Cleveland Browns weather outside. The, I'm sorry, the Cleveland what? Browns, the oh, football oh, team that's in oh, town. That's right, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they're doing better this year, aren't they? Anyway, uh, well, we'd like to welcome our very special guest here to uh, Goulardi Fest this year, Mr. Charles Herbert. I'm sure you'll all remember him. Let's give it up for him. I'm sure you'll all remember him from uh, some very, very famous uh, movies that the Midnight Movie over the years has shown. Uh, 13 Ghosts, The Fly, and uh, among others. Uh, plus, I understand, uh, the, the, I mean, among, among some other uh, big-time movies, Houseboat with uh, Cary Grant and Sophia Loren. Are you on? No, you're not. <laughs> It would be good if all the equipment was working. Yeah, I did a uh, movie, uh, Houseboat with Cary Grant, Sophie Lauren, uh, 1958, and a whole bunch of other actors. It was a great, great movie, and it was uh, great to work with those people. Well, I tell you, you know, and, and it, what's fascinating, uh, you know, obviously, is what, what was it like working with all of these big stars? I well, mean, you most of them very were very people. nice, uh, but there were some that... You know, they weren't that nice to children. They considered children scene stealers, but uh, not Cary Grant, Soapy Lauren, or Vincent Price, or uh, David Niven, or people like that. They were, they spent time talking to you, and they didn't make you feel uh, intimidated at all. Like, uh, okay, so they treated you like one of the gang. Uh, yeah, absolutely. A little special. Yeah. Well, you know, and there's got to be some great memories there. Who, uh, I mean, uh, can, can, you, uh, can you pick uh, a favorite uh, from, from the years that you Gotta worked with? Got to be Cary Grant, Soapy, Lauren, and Vincent Price. You know, those three, uh, uh, I will always remember the rest of my life, how nice they were to me and kept in contact after we did the movie, sent Christmas cards and uh, did things they didn't really have to do. Boy, what's it like to be on the Christmas card list of Cary Grant and Sophia Loren? Now I remember you telling me uh, off off stage before we uh, before we uh, showed the the movie yesterday uh, a, a a quick little story about uh, you and uh, Sophia Loren when you were working on the movie. Yeah, uh, uh, before we started work, uh, I'm you know eight nine years old, and she wanted to play a little game with me where she would give me an injection in my buttocks, and I would have to give her an injection in my buttocks, uh, in her buttocks. Uh, and I, you know, it was fun for a while, and I was with my uncle, because uh, I always had to have a guardian on stage, and uh, uh, one day she said, you know, before work, Charlie, come on up, time for your injection, so I turned to my Uncle Butch, and I said, Uncle Butch, I really don't want to do this today, and my Uncle Butch said, uh, uh, Sophie, I'll do it, I'll do what it, was it? Uh, she, what? she wasn't going for that. Well, you, you guys were pinching each other's butts. Is that what it was? Every That's morning. Right? Yeah, every yeah. morning. That's, if now, I only knew now what I knew then or, you know, that kind of thing. At, at what point in your life did you realize, Yeah, I uh, gave that up? You, you know, uh, <laughs> I re it didn't take long once I became a teenager to realize. Because at that time she, you know, played my mother and, and I knew she was beautiful, but uh, I didn't. I didn't uh, realize how beautiful she was till uh, I became a teenager. You didn't look it up in the old Rolodex and call I her did, up one day I and say, "Hey, Sophie, uh, uh, how about an not. injection?" I'm sure I could go up to her today and tell her who my character was, and she'd remember me just like that. That's how close it's like working with family. That's fantastic. And Cary Grant, uh, 
I, uh, I moved to Las Vegas to show you what kind of person he was. Uh, he somehow got a hold of my mother, and he said, because he went up to Las Vegas all the time, and he said, I understand Charlie lives in Las Vegas now. And she says, yeah, he works at the uh, Circus Circus Hotel upstairs at the Midway, the games. And I, I, wherever I worked once I got out of the business, I never told people I was an actor or, you know, uh, or ever was in the business or anything. Uh, one day I'm working upstairs in the games, and I was a supervisor by then. And I had a, uh, a radio, and I'm looking down to the end of the road down there, and it looks like there's a commotion going on, maybe a fight, you know, that would happen occasionally. So I got a hold of my supervisor, and I said, you better get up here there. Looks like there's something going on, get security, because uh, all people are all gathering, they're all backed up against the wall. And I turn around, and I look up, and here it's like Moses part in the, the Red Sea. Here comes Cary Grant walking right up to me. Charlie, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. Your mother told me you work, and I just wanted to stop by and say hello. And he puts his arm around me. I mean, now that's something that you, you don't. Of course, my cover was blown, but uh, uh, that's the kind of person he was. You and know, every, it, everybody in the casino is looking at you like, what? Well, when he walked down on? the middle of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the row, I'm telling you, people were backed up against the wall. Uh, you know, he had that kind of a presence. What, uh, what, what did your boss think of you after that? A lot more. <laughs> I got a lot more respect after that. Uh, did, they, did they travel around with all their bodyguards and stuff back then like they do now? Oh, no, no. He was walking all by himself. Boy, times have changed, haven't they? Unless he had a whole female list of bodyguards. Cause he had a, a female following that uh, didn't seem normal. <laughs> There's an entourage for you. Yeah, right. Uh, I tell you what. Well, uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about, I mean, you, you, you've done quite a bit of movies. You did quite a, quite a lot of movies when you were a child. Um, I, I, I'll just bring it up just because I think it was kind of an interesting uh, little bit. I, I, of course, pulled up the Bible from IMDb, and you had your, had your little bio there. That was and mildly popular. That was, and and, and I, the, the first time I read this, right on the first Charles Herbert was a mildly popular uh, 1950s yeah, I, I child actor, and I, and I read that when I first read it, I thought it said wildly popular. I was like, oh, and then I did a double I take. Did, I did 50 TV shows and 25 movies and 10 commercials, and I was mildly popular. What do you have to do, 100 to be wildly popular? Don't get no respect. No respect. No respect. No respect. No. Was, I tell you. Um, well, so I mean, how how did you how, how did you get started? How did you become? Uh, uh, I was riding on a bus. None of my family was in the show business, uh, uh, and a talent agent heard me talking to my mother. Thought I was cute or something, or obnoxious. I don't know. Uh, gave me his card, uh, which I immediately gave to the bus driver. I must have known something, and. Uh, uh, he said, come and see me. Uh, I, I think you could do a lot of work as a child actor. So we went to see him after talking to our family. And they said, yeah, we, we checked him out. He's in the book, you know. And he got me an agent, and I started going out on interviews. And right away, I started getting roles. So it was like quite literally discovered on the side of the street there, basically. No, I was on I the mean, bus. You were on the day. bus, but I, I mean, but, but still. I you made were, it to the bus. You were just minding your own business. And I mean, you, so you... You and I never, I never minded my own business. You, you never had my well, entire <laughs> life. I was never known for somebody who minded his own business. But you never had any any notion. Your parents mm. never had any notion we had whatsoever. No, no, nothing, nothing about the uh, motion picture business. Uh, you know, uh, we just uh, were regular people. And was it a chore for you to all of a sudden? Okay, you're in all these roles and stuff like that. You're getting work. To remember all those lines and, no, and I, do that stuff? No, uh, remembering the lines and doing the roles was the easy part of it. Uh, I, I, I just evidently was born with a talent that uh, I was never scared. I was never intimidated. Uh, it just came natural to me. And that's what they used to say. I, I looked very natural. Wow. So... Uh once you know what you basically were going from part to part to part is, it, right. is that pretty much how it went exactly i mean as soon as you did one movie uh i mean you you had your favorites oh, william, I, william I, castle I got, was obviously a big fan of yours yeah he uh i had done something probably the fly and he had seen that and wanted and wanted me 
and told my agent uh, he wanted me for uh, 13 Ghosts. And my agent told him what he's committed to do with this other movie. He said, if he gets out of that movie, you can get him out of that movie, I'll give him the starring role in uh, 13 Ghosts. And there were some big actors in that. And I, I didn't know nothing about it. It meant nothing to me. But uh, that was quite a, because, you know, Donald Woods and Martin Milner and Rosemary DeCamp and a lot of big stars were in that movie. And I, I got the starring role. So what movie did you have to give up in order to do that? They never told me. Never told you. Oh, you didn't even know. Gone with the wind, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I've heard of it. Uh, so you had a, a lot. They never told me. You had, you had, you, I mean, you had a very successful career going for quite a while. There I did. As a child I did actor. about altogether about 80, 50 TV shows and about oh, 20 movies and assorted commercials and live stuff. And then, unfortunately, time rolled on. Yeah, I, uh, I did something when I was 21. I stopped working at about 15 or 16. And then uh, Hal Cantor, who was one of the biggest producers of TV uh, sitcoms at the time, probably the biggest, called me after about five years and asked me if I wanted to do it. Julia said he'd been trying to get a hold of me. That's the series where Diane Cannon, the, uh, the first series that I... Uh, an Afro-American uh, starred in. Right. And it was very fun. I did that. And uh, then he called me back to do an interview. But I, by then, I, uh, you know, I just, I, I didn't have any interest. I had an interest in doing it because I couldn't do anything else. But it wasn't, uh, I didn't, you, know, you need an identity to be, uh, uh, there's a big difference between being a child actor and being an adult actor. As a child actor, you, you don't have to act. You just be yourself. You know, I never took any lessons or anything. When you, once you become an adult, they tell you, you know, now you're going to have to act. So what do you mean I'm going to have to act? Well, you're going to have to go to school. You're going to have to take lessons. You're going to have to learn how to act. I said, well, I never had to before. I said, well, you're going to have to now. I didn't believe them, but it is true. If you want to make the adjustments to, a, to becoming a, uh, uh, an adult actor, you're going to have to put the work in. It's not going to just, you know, there are exceptions, but you're going to have to learn how to become an actor, and uh, I just wasn't willing to, to do that. Well, and, and we've heard, I think everybody's heard stories over the years. Everybody knows, uh, you know, what has happened to a lot of child actors over the years, and, you know, once you get out of that cutesy period, and then all of a sudden, everything just starts to dry up, and nobody seems to be interested Absolutely. anymore. Absolutely. Uh, how was that for you? That, I'm, I'm one of those stories. Um, my friend Paul Peterson, who I'm sure you all remember from the Donna Reed show, he was in Housewood. He has a support group uh, for child actors. He started it by himself, oh, about 20 years ago, and he continues it today. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Danny Thomas show. But the young uh, uh, kid in that, Rusty Hamer, committed suicide. So uh, uh, they cremated him, and uh, Paul took his ashes to the Pacific Ocean and put, you know, put him out in the ocean. And he promised Rusty, because he knew him very well, he said, I'm going to make a promise to you that I'll do everything I can to make sure another child actor doesn't commit suicide. And he's been doing that ever since. And the stories are... Uh, because Hollywood, uh, you know, the, I could always use the example of money, uh, but it's so much more than that. I, uh, I earned close to $200,000, and when I turned 21, I had $1,700 in the bank. Now, it just so happens that my particular situation, there are other situations where parents uh, drank, they gambled, they blew their kids' money or whatever, my father was sick, just worked out that way. He couldn't work. My mother had to take care of me, so I was the only one that, uh, that worked in my family. I'm the only paycheck that came in through my whole childhood. I never saw my father go to work. Uh, and, you know, it, it, the, you know, the loss of identity. And when I got out, uh, uh, you know, they tell you, you're going to be an actor for the rest of your life. You don't need an education. You, don't, you, know, we, you go to school for three hours, but... It really wasn't school, you know. Uh, if they needed you, you got out. And then it turned out when I, you know, once you, once you turn 14 or 15 and you can't do the little roles anymore, and they, there are very few roles for uh, older teenagers, uh, it turned out I needed an education. 
I had no education, I had no skills, I had no idea what I was going to do with the rest of my life. Luckily, I got involved with my family, and my uncle got me a job. I moved to Las Vegas and worked in the casino business, but I was a number of years there where I just drifted. You know, I uh, got involved in things I shouldn't have gotten involved in uh, because I had no identity. I had, uh, and they, they, the biggest thing is that they, the Hollywood treats, uh, they don't treat their adult actors very well. You know, there's a lot of rejection involved. If I, I was very successful, and if I got one part in ten interviews, I was I was doing good. That's very successful. But that's, yeah. that's very successful. That's nine rejections, and you always think, no matter what your parents tell you, it wasn't you. It was your you know you weren't tall enough, you weren't short enough, you know. But you take it personal. Why didn't they like me? And these are things that a nine-year-old, eight-year-old child shouldn't have to go through. Uh, so they treated the children just like they treated the adults. And they never uh, uh, made the distinction that we're not dealing with a 40-year-old man. We're dealing with an eight-year-old child. They absolutely could care less. They treated the eight-year-old child just the way, if not worse, than they treated the 40-year-old uh, adult. And the, the main thing is that you know, we all need an identity. Uh, uh, you, you, we all need to look in the mirror and see who we are. And then as we get older, we make adjustments, good and bad, to, our, to, to who, our, who we are. I, one week I was Robert, one week I was David. So when I was a child, and you form your identity as a child, when I was a child, I had no identity. I saw a nose, a mustache, or whatever, but I didn't know who I was in person. And if you don't do it as a child, by the time you become a teenager, it's too late. It's a pretty rough thing for, yeah, a, for a kid go, to deal with. You can't go back. You've got to start when you're four or five years old forming your identity. And without an identity, none of us have a chance in life. Now, there were a lot of classic uh, uh, stories about a lot of big-name child actors over the years. A lot of the kids from Our Gang, uh, some, a lot of them right. had some really tough times. Uh, like Jackie Cooper, if people remember Jackie Cooper. Jackie I saw Coogan, something recently that Did blew me away. Uh, Jackie Cooper was doing an interview, and you know he worked with Wallace Beery, who was one of my favorite actors. I loved Wallace Beery. He always had that, you know, lovable uh, uh, persona about him. And Jackie Cooper said that when he did The Champ, a very famous movie, and with Jackie, with uh, Wallace Beery, Wallace Beery wouldn't give him the time of day. Wouldn't talk to him, had nothing to do with him, treated him just like, you know, uh, like he didn't exist. Really? I don't know how Jackie Cooper handled that. I could have handled that. That's pretty sad. That shocked me. Now, when you were a kid uh, and, and doing all of your uh, movies and TV shows, did you develop any friendships with other child actors? Yeah, I, I didn't uh, keep the friendships. It, it took these shows uh, to get me to back together with Paul and... Uh, uh, Susan Gordon and uh, Johnny Provost from Lassie, Jay North from uh, Dennis and Menace. We all were friends at the time, but those kids kind of went to private school and I went to a public school. And it was not good uh, to go to be, because I was singled out. You know, kids would always ask me, read a line or, or uh, you know, uh, not give me your autograph. But they made a big deal about me, and I, I made up that I had a twin brother, that it wasn't me that was doing it. Nobody bought that, but uh, uh, I was actually ashamed of it. You know, I was actually uh, embarrassed by it. Wow. Now, see, now, you see in, in my mind, you know, when I, when I was that age, if I had been something like that, I, I, would, I would figure that, that people would, you know, kind of get an attitude. And I know there are a lot of actors that did get an attitude you know, about things, you know. Oh, uh, about themselves, well, About mean? themselves, you know. And, 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 oh, and, no, uh, I was just the opposite. And the thing is, people say, well, were you worried that so-and-so was friends with you just because you were an actor? In all honesty, I didn't have that, uh, that problem. First of all, I was very involved in sports. So when I wasn't working, uh, somehow my parents let me go to the park. And once you get involved in sports and uh, you become one of the guys. So I played sports, I talked sports, uh, I was at the park all the time, so uh, they knew me more for being at the park than they, and nobody really bothered me, when that was my, my sanctuary. 
that's nice. Uh, it's good. You, you, everybody's got to have have something like that. Well, that, that was you know, sports was that. my sanctuary. Still is. Right. Um, what was it like though when uh, when when you were when when you were big and uh, and uh, out there in the public? What was it like for you when you were out and about? Uh, I you know I to this day uh, I don't know if it's a look. I would walk into a, a Baskin Robbins and sit down and eat. And I swear, I know it sounds gonna like I'm paranoid, but it happens to be true. People would look at me all the time. They were constantly looking at me. But I didn't do a series, so they didn't say Dennis the Menace. That's what I wanted, and I had some bad experiences with pilots. Uh, I, I wouldn't have minded much if they looked at me and said, oh, uh, Dennis the Menace, uh, 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 Lassie. Uh, but they looked at me and they didn't know, you had to, they had to come up and ask me what you were in. So maybe I'm being a little egotistical when I say that it bothered me that uh, I was supposed to do the Patty Duke show, I was supposed to do Tom Sawyer, I was supposed to do an Ernie Kilvacs uh, pilot, but he passed away. So uh, that bothered me because they kept looking at me. They knew they knew me, but yeah. they didn't know what they knew yeah. me from. Yeah, yeah. I know I know that guy, but I just yeah. can't figure when out where he's I, I became very self-conscious. Uh, it caused a lot of problems. I... Uh, I through an inferiority complex, why are they all looking at me, you know. Uh, it was not a positive for me at all. Now, we get did, that all the time. Did, did, did you, what? So we get that all the time. We well, yeah, know yeah. you from somewhere. We get that all the time? Maybe you get that all the time. Nobody. Well, they never even talk to you. So. Nobody knows me, no, no. I get I, that now, but now know, it's a negative. Hey, don't I know you? I was going to say, do, do, do you ever get uh, I still any, get anything it. recognized? Enough? I, because I know you're not going to believe this, but... I still walk into places and people look at me, and I, you know, I wouldn't tell anybody this. I guess it's over now, but uh, I swear it's just my face. I guess I have a, a familiar face. People look at me now, and uh, it's like uh, uh, they they're thinking, I think I know that face. And even people that come up and and get uh, autographs. Uh, 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 Remember my eyes or something like that. You know, and that's exactly what I was going to say. Hey, Rocco, Rocco, you get? Do, do you have? Do you have the uh, the, the the picture? You know, the the, the picture at the, the the hands and everything up there. Because I was going to say when when I first when I when I first on Friday night when I first came in and I came over to talk to you and I saw you, I said immediately as soon as I saw your eyes, I was like, holy crap! That that, that yeah, I, that I recognize guy, him you know. right there. I I don't know whether uh, whether he had that up there or not, but. Uh, uh, you have very distinctive eyes, and when you when you when you watch the movies when you were the kid, that your eyes. Really yeah, and I, I was able to make uh, uh, look scared. Very expressive. Was, yeah, I, I was able to do uh, uh, the big eyes and uh, you know the both. Yeah, there mouth. it is. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they were playing the music too loud that day. <laughs> well, I noticed that yesterday when we watched Thirteen Ghosts that. You fit right in with the adult actors because even though you were a kid, your face conveyed more than just to be a child. It, it had was, a real maturity. It yeah. was very natural for me. Uh, I have a semi-photographic memory, but it was very natural. I was never scared to go on stage, uh, to go in the studio. But you, all, you, know, you always look very comfortable. And it always amazes me. It's always amazed me, no matter when, throughout, the, throughout the history of watching movies or old TV shows or even today, when, when you see... Really young kids, like uh, you know, anywhere from five to ten years old. I mean, you think, how do these kids do that? I mean, they get really, really expressive and they and, and really believable and very emotional. Right. It's like, I, it's always amazed me at how 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 a young and kid I, can do something like I that. I don't know if now uh, they get a lot of training. Uh, I you know, in my time, uh, some kids went to. Uh, you know, went to get acting, acting classes, classes and yeah, things like that. Yeah, Did you I, do anything like that? Nothing, never, never have. You just walked right up, right from right off the bus, right, right onto and, the stage. And, and, and people the... used to say that was a positive for me because I, I looked uh, natural. So natural, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's amazing. So you had a so you had a you had a rough time uh, uh, coming out. What um, when when you uh, when you met up with uh, with with your friend uh, what was it Paul yeah Paul Peterson uh, who runs this foundation for child actors and he still continues to this day now that started back when back in the sixties I would say no I'd say about twenty years ago oh twenty years ago okay 
uh, I, I'm assuming that, you know, you still have the kind of whole Hollywood chew you up, spit you out kind of syndrome oh, that still goes on today. Um, I mean, what? Wh how, how big has this whole thing grown? I mean, is it dealing oh, with his with foundation now? now? He goes, he has politicians in there. Uh, he's made sure that the, uh, the uh, teachers are certified because before they didn't have to be certified. I mean, the uh, ones that are teaching the kids off on the yeah, set. Yeah, they were just retired thing. school teachers, you know. So if you had to be on three hours, then they would come in and say, uh, you know, the last, you could only work eight hours. The last uh, uh, to an hour, uh, they'd say, we need Charlie. And they'd say, well, he's only got an hour in. He needs another two hours. So they say, well, you keep him for the other two hours. And then the teacher that replaces you tomorrow, maybe she'd be a little more cooperative. So they, they actually work for the studio, not the child. Wow. So looking back on all of it, what, you know, knowing what you know now, if you could do it all over again, would you still do it? Would you do it differently? or would you? Would all I would do was do the acting and, uh, and then go into seclusion. I would never, I would, I would have no life outside. I mean, it was a situation where the parents, I was, it reached a point where I was pretty hot. So I would go into interviews, and uh, you could hear the other parents saying, uh, oh, here's Charlie Herbert. We're, we might as well go home. You know, and, and then not, not softly, loud, you know. Uh, and my mother would say, don't let that bother you. Well, I'm six years old. It's going to bother me. Then when you get to school, the kids treated me. I mean, there was a time where they did treat me very special. I made up I had a twin brother and that it wasn't me or whatever. But the uh, uh, parents of the kids that you were friends with, they didn't like you because they'd look at you when you go to their house and say, why are you in the movies and not my son? My son is as good, cute as you. He's smarter than you. So the parents outside didn't like you. Jealousy. Uh, yeah, yeah, because of their kids. And then the schooling. Uh, my teachers, I had some wonderful teachers who were very cooperative. But the principal, when I was doing a movie, the principal would go to the uh, teacher that, my, my teacher in grammar school, and uh, say, look, you're going to have to uh, spend about an hour tonight giving Charlie homework so he could take it to the studio. And some of the teachers let you know, you know, I had to spend an hour last night because of you, an extra hour doing homework. And you're sitting here going, why are you, you know, why are you blaming me? I don't want to do this. This you know? poor little kid, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they were, you know, some people can be very, uh, very cruel. And you just the main thing is you can't treat an 8-year-old child like you treat a 40-year-old adult. And they didn't treat the 40-year-old adults that well in Hollywood either. But uh, they had no, no, main thing is send the check to the house, do the job, and that's it. So what would you say your favorite memory of, uh, of everything is? Uh, how, the, the, uh, the fly, of course, but the, the movie Houseboat. Uh, that was like a family. We went on location. We celebrated uh, birthdays together. And I can't tell you what Cary Grant, Sophie, and Lauren were like. These were two of the... God created them on one of his best days. They started their <coughs> off-the-screen romance. He was madly in love with her, but she wouldn't leave her husband. But they were a perfect match, and it was always special to see them uh, when you came in the morning. How long did it take you to shoot that movie? That took about three months. Three months. Yeah, that's a long, long time. We day in and day out. And huh? the director, Mel Shavelson, the producer, Jack Rose, were partners. Mel Shavelson was just a soft-spoken, nice man. You know, some of these people, they had different points of, different ways of getting their point across, but he let the actors in there. We went on, we went to Washington, D.C. Uh, we were in Massachusetts. We did a lot of location, but it was fun to go to work. It was uh, actually fun to go to work. Yeah, well, did you, uh, what did you prefer, the film work or the TV work? Did you find a big difference f for a child actor? Well, that's a good question. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the film work Probably better because I knew I was going to be there for a couple of weeks. Uh, the TV work was done very fast. You had to get it done. There was a time limit. There's a time limit on movies too. But the TV work, you were not 
it was all done within a week. I mean, you only had five days. Because you were, you were actually shooting back. That's when, when they were actually making the TV shows right when they were, shoot, when they were showing them, right? I mean, you, you, you had to do oh, one the, that week, and it was on the week after? Or no, what? no, no, no. It, it, I did live TV shows. I did uh, Red Skelton. I did a lot of Red Skelton. Uh, I did Playoffs 90s. Uh, uh, and I don't know if they were taped, so it, uh, uh, it might have been on that week. But the, uh, the other shows, the My Three Sons and everything like that, it was on weeks and weeks later. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, uh, you said yesterday when we were kind of talking, he asked you, did you ever get scared like when you were shooting a 13 Ghost? And you said, no, the only thing you got scared about was that the fly. You yeah, the, that fly, the fly is something about doing the fly because you never see the, the special effects. Uh, like doing 13 ghosts, there were no ghosts there. Uh, we all had to, they all had to put that in later. Some of the, the like when we went into the laboratory for the fly, you knew that this was going to be scary. Uh, but when I went to see it, but still they had to do the special effects afterwards and put it in because they couldn't do it at the same time. So when I went to see it in the movies, I had no idea it was scary, and it scared the bejesus out of me. I really, of all the movies, I did a lot of horror movies, but that one scared the heck crap out of me. I, I think it scared the crap out of everybody when they watched it, especially yeah, when you're yeah. a kid watching a movie like that. I, I, I know. I, watching some of these old movies when I was a kid, I, the, the, the memories are very vivid because they did. You know, you watch them nowadays, and yeah, they're a lot of fun to watch, but they don't affect you the same way that they did when you were a kid. Right. You know, they really made an impression back then. Now, you talk about, uh, you know, Cary Grant, Sophia Loren, obviously two of the greatest actors of all time, and a uh, big fan. But and I love all kinds of movies. I love good movies, bad movies, straight movies, funny movies. But horror movies have a special place in my heart. So, obviously, Vincent Price is one of my all-time favorite. Uh, and and uh, there, there's one person that if I could have had the chance to meet, I, I, I would have done anything opposite. to have met him. And the thing is, people don't realize, Vincent Price was a big star before he started doing, or a star anyway, before he started doing horror movies. I mean, he did movies with Dragonwood, oh, yeah. Dragonwick. Uh, he was a great actor. He never played, and the, the amazing thing about Vincent Price is he, he never played comedy and movies, uh, except for a few roles. But this was a man who, uh, I'm sure you all remember the Red Skelton, or hopefully you all remember Red Skelton. He had a variety show on once a week. I did it more than any kid. I was on there all the time. And Vincent Price was like a regular on there. He loved to have people, make people laugh. He loved to, to have, he didn't care if you laugh with him or at him, as long as you laugh. He made himself look like a fool. He did more Red Skeletons, I think, than anybody else. He was always a guest on Red Skeleton or any of the other comedy because he, he had a great sense of humor and he loved to make people laugh. He's the last person in the world you think next to Boris Karloff or Bela Lugosi you think would be like that, but I don't know if they were like that. But he loved to make people laugh. Well, I tell you, you know, you talk about not doing too much comedy, but that made me think of one of my all-time favorite movies, and I still love watching it nowadays. Was uh, oh, now I can't the the Raven, oh the yeah. Raven with uh, with Boris Karloff and Peter Lorre and and Vincent Price, and it was I mean it, it had a very creepy feel to the movie, but it was the whole thing was so tongue in cheek. Uh -huh. and it was that the, there was a lot of comedy going right. on, and it was it was so interesting. I think one of the things that made it such a great movie was that these the, the, the three of the biggest, I mean, uh, among other things, but scariest three, three of the biggest, three of the scariest actors right. in, in he, history. He did. He also did some of the like Beach Bank at Blingo, Bingos, yeah, yeah. and not yeah. not that one, but. Some of the what was it, stupid Duck, Duck, movies. Dr. Gold Bikini or something like that. Right, Gold, yeah. Uh, yeah. He did some, which I, well, I can't say I, was, I liked him, but I mean, he, he didn't, you know, he did some stupid movies, it was a lot of you fun. know. It was a lot of fun. He loved to cook, too, didn't he? He was a gourmet I remember, cook. I remember uh, in his later years, I used to see some TV shows where he loved to cook, and I was like, he cooked, did he, did, did, did he, he brought cook it for on, you? He brought it on stage, but I couldn't eat it because it wasn't kosher. 
Oh, no. I told him I can't. <laughs> and my mother said, you're not kosher now. Eat that food, will you? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, hey, uh, I want to give uh, uh, any, anybody a chance Thanks. to uh, ask any kind of questions that you might have out there for Charles. This gentleman right here came to see me. How are you doing again? We were talking over here earlier that you're going to be seeing David, David Hedison here soon. Oh, right. Who was the original I, fly. Oh, yeah. Doing a show next week uh, with David Hedison, and it'll be the first time in 53 years that uh, we've seen each other. Wow. Do you, think, do you know of anything that's going to be coming up? They might make a modern day fly coming out maybe well they, i'm sure they will but they won't invite me I, uh, oh, they, they never do it. <laughs> yeah, they do they do uh, uh uh remakes of the 13 ghosts and the fly and they they must have lost my number i don't know uh, have you i mean when when's the last time anybody has ever exp has anybody ever expressed any interest in the last uh, well uh, see i uh, the last thing i tonight? did i was 16 and like i said hal Cantor. i don't know how far you go back but you talk to anybody in TV, and if they list the top ten producers of sitcoms in, in Hollywood, Hal Cantor is on that list. He called me when I was 21 and said, I've been looking for you for years. Do you want to do this, Julia? And I did the Julia. The thing I remember most about that, out of over 82, three, four uh, TV shows and movies, it's the first time they sent a check to my house. I never got a check to my, never, I just signed the checks. This is the first one that they sent it to my apartment. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Yes. I have a question for you. Um, they always tell me that I love watching movies over and over and over again. And I love, I love Vincent Price. I love his movies. I love the House of Wax and everything else. So it's like, when I watch a movie, I learn more about it each time I watch it. Right. And I can watch it 10 or 12 times, and it makes no difference. You know, it's, you know what the theme is and everything else. Like with The Fly, the old one, and then you watch the new one, it's like more gory and everything else. But movies are so interesting because you learn a lot from them, and especially when you go back to the black and white ones, and That's then you, me. Then you watch the colored ones, and it is very, very interesting. See, the new movies, only a couple of movies of the later Jenner, Jenner, uh, uh, like I watched, I went to the movies to see Dr. Strangelove with uh, oh, Peter what a Sellers. great movie. <laughs> oh, I, I thought, it, I didn't understand it. I, I couldn't, I just, you know, I mean, it made no, it was just stupid. It's a little then, off the wall. Well, then I went to see it, or it was on TV. So I, I happened to catch it on TV, and I watched it, and I said, oh, this is one of the greatest movies I've ever seen in my life. There's certain movies that, like, and I happen to be uh, a big fan of comedy. It's like a movie called The Sunshine Boys with uh, Walt oh, Walter Matthau yeah. and, uh, uh, and uh, George Burns. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it, it helps to be Jewish. It helps to be a little sharp. I watched that. And it's the kind of movie, when I recommend it to people, I says, you're going to have to watch it again because it's going to go by so fast. The lines are going to come so quick. You're going to need to see this again. But the, the, I, rent, I watch a DVD nearly every night. I rent a DVD. I go to the Red Boxes. I'm one of those guys who goes to Blockbuster and uh, all the places I can to get. Uh, it's a part of my life. I watch movies all the time. But I don't watch the new movies. Once I see it, with very few exceptions, do I ever watch them again. I, I came here with Ron, uh, who's a vendor over here, Ron Adams, and I, I brought him a bunch of my, my, my eight DVDs. The only movies that I watch over and over and over again are on TCM. I watch James Cagney again. Doesn't Pat O'Brien, Humphrey Bogart, I can watch those movies it, they, as long as I haven't seen it the week before. But those are the only movies that I watch over and over again. And it doesn't matter that I know what's going on. But the late movies, I, I really don't, once I see it, that with very few exceptions, that's, that, I've seen enough of it. You know, I don't need to see it again. That's why I like the older movies better. But you're like, you're like me, okay? It's like, I love the Turner Classic movies. And it's like, 
the first thing when I have the control in my hand, I go to 56 and it's a Turner Classic. Yeah, 40 for me. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> it's wonderful because I could stay up until all hours of the night. No commercials. Exactly, exactly. So. And I hope, you know, they've been telling us for months that uh, Robert Osborne is on, uh, is on vacation. Mm -hmm. I think we all know by now, I don't have any inside information, that he's not on vacation for three months. I have a feeling he's, got, he's going to be in April at the Roosevelt Hotel mm -hmm. doing their, their new cinema, that he's well, he's going to be back, I love the man, but, you know, and I realize why they're doing it. If they said that he's sick, they would be inundated with calls and letters. We want to find out where he lives, where we can write him. Yeah. So I'm not buying that he's on vacation for three months. But I just hope he's going to be okay because I love the man. But I'm not ashamed yeah. to tell you I'm 62 years old. So am I. And it's like... And I'm to, ashamed. And to go, to go back and watch these movies that my parents used to watch and everything else, it's like, it's a, it's a memory. It's a See, I, my memory. parents didn't... Uh, I had, it was like, you know, they were parents in name only. There was no going to the ballpark. There was no movies watching really? together. I did nothing with my, my, my parents. Charles, wow. did you ever see the remake, the new modern remake of 13 Ghosts? No, I didn't, and it's nothing, not because uh, uh, I love Tony... Uh, Tony Shalhoub? Yeah, I love him Monk. in Wings. Yeah, not so much in Wings, but I love him in... in, in uh, Monk. In Monk. Monk. Monk yeah. No, in, uh, in Wings. Oh, in Wings. Yeah, okay. uh, I love situation comedies. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, he's, a, he's great. He's a great actor. He's sensational. I'm sure he did fine, but I, I never, did, never did see it. Uh, 13 Ghosts was a, uh, uh, that, was a, that was 13 Ghosts, right? Okay. The, the Fly remake with Jeff Goldblum, I, who I'm a big fan of, uh, I saw bits and pieces of it, but it was a little gory, I guess, for me. Well, you know, as time goes on, you know, there are a lot of great old movies, a lot of classic old movies, and they're always fun to watch. But, you know, it, it seems like Hollywood doesn't have a whole lot of creativity a lot well, anymore well, because they just keep recycling things over and over and over again and, and, and making remakes and remakes and remakes. And, uh, you know, a, a, as, as generations change and as, as well, society like changes, stories. you know, it gets a little bit, you know, they, they, they have to get slicker and... and more yeah, visual, then you have a, a lot more gory in yeah, order to get the I attention. Like, you know? I like story. Hap, feel, we call, used to call them feel-good movies. I like feel-good movies. Uh, yeah. uh, they don't seem to have many of those feel-good movies. And some of the younger actors, uh, they're not young anymore, but, you know, they, uh, uh, I think Johnny Depp is very talented. And uh, uh, I didn't realize until I saw Benjamin Button how talented Brad Pitt really is. You know, I think we underrate his talent, but if you've ever seen the movie, Brad... Uh, Not just a pretty face. No, yeah. the uh, uh, Benjamin Button. Benjamin where, Button, yeah. yeah. if you ever see that, you'll know how talented... But then there are so many others, I don't want to mention their names, where they're there because they look good. You know, they're good-looking guys, and the girls love them, and... Uh, uh, they're not really talented. That's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, they just... They won the gene pool. <laughs> right. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Um, you said you were going to be on the Patty Duke show? Yeah, I had done the pilot for the Patty Duke show. You were going to be her brother, I was right? going to be her brother. And it sold and everything like that. And then my agent was William Morris. I know you oh, know yeah, who William, William Morris oh, is. Yeah. They're one, one of the biggest or the biggest you know, with MCA. Uh, they produced the, uh, the, uh, the, the series and uh, cast me as uh, one of their clients. I would cast me as her brother. And uh, we're all set to do it, and I want to do this. I want to do this because when I go into Baskin Robbins, I want somebody to look at me and say, Patty Duke. <laughs> I don't want them to look at me and say, I, I know, you know. Where do I know you from? I, I admit, maybe it's my ego, but I admit that was very important to me. Because I would do these publicity tours with Johnny Provost from Lassie and Jay North from uh, uh, Dennis Amenis, and all the people would say, you're from Lassie, you're from Dennis Amenis, and what did you do? Or I know I know you, and it, 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 would, it bothered me. So uh, we were all set to do it, uh, and then I was under the impression, I just saw Patty weeks ago, 
that she she's from New York, and at that time they did most of their most of their sitcoms in Hollywood. They still do. Nobody shot a sitcom or a TV series in New York. Uh, that was all theater, you know. So uh, uh, they called me and told me that Patty wants to go back to New York. She's homesick. Uh, she wants to be uh, uh, back home with the, where she's more familiar. Uh, so they're cutting you out. Uh, they're going to take a kid from Oliver. They're going to give him half the, uh, uh, we found this out later, half the episodes, half the money, but don't worry, we'll take care of you. Uh, you know, right. we went to a lawyer, and the lawyer said, you can sue them. You have, they have no leg to stand on because you're one of the reasons the pilot sold. But he says, but you'll probably never work again. Well, I'm the only one working in the family, so obviously we didn't have much of a choice. And then uh, after a couple of months, they dropped me. I always thought Patty, and I never heard from her, that it was Patty that did this and, and never said, hey, where's Charlie? You know, And also the father. The original father was Mark Miller from the Brady Bunch. or Okay, and then they used William Shallot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not William, yeah. not the Star Trek. Yeah, I know you're, ta uh, yeah, okay. I know you're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah, they cut him out too. Actually, I think he was on an episode of Star Trek, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he was. He did everything else. But then I met her, and uh, I, I happened to be sitting out there when we got to the show, and there was a lady and her husband. Uh, she's not married to John Austin anymore. Sitting next to me, and we just struck up a conversation. They're from Idaho, and. Uh, I didn't recognize her, and she didn't recognize me. And she said, uh, I said, are you here for the uh, convention? She said, yes, I'm one of the guests. I said, what's your name? And she goes, I'm Patty Duke. I said, I'm Charlie Herbert. Well, her eyes lit up. She started. Oh. I was afraid that was, I saw that red light. Oh, I started to tell her what happened, and she explained to me what the true story was that uh, uh, this is another example of how Hollywood really cares for their kids. The reason that they decided, it wasn't her decision, the reason they decided to go to New York at the time, if you can believe this, in the 50s, they didn't have child labor laws for uh, child actors. So they worked her 10, 12 hours a day with no schooling. So they knew that they couldn't do that with me. That's the reason they did it. We, we had a great relationship, and I hope we stay friends forever. For a long time, I was extremely uh, angry at her. Uh, when you were in your teens and you decided that you'd missed out on some of your education, what part of your education do you think you missed? All of it. Uh, I, uh, I, didn't, uh, I felt that I didn't need an education. Why would I need an education? Uh, uh, I'm going to be an actor the rest of my life, you know, I don't need an education. And I was not a good student. Uh, I took it for <laughs> granted. I was not a good student. Uh, but it, as it turns out, when you, uh, uh, when you, when you get out of the business, uh, uh, they tell you you're not going to work anymore. Believe me, you need an education. More so, I think, back then than now, because now you can have a college degree and still not be able to get a job. Back then, <laughs> back then well, unfortunately, and that's a shame, back then, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you didn't necessarily need a, a, an education, but uh, you needed it as much now, because you could get jobs with, with college degrees. I had, uh, I, went to, I went to college, took an acting course, and, and never went back. I barely graduated high school. Well, now, were the people in the business uh, back then, were they telling you? Were they kind of reinforcing that, was that the whole perception. idea? That, that, that was the perception. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about your education. You're going to be a, an actor forever. Anything to get you feeling comfortable, to make you vulnerable, to make you dependent upon them. Uh, you know? And then you've you're you got to remember, you know, think back when you were eight years old. Uh, you have to make decisions you have about your career, about, about you know, acting. You have to work with people like Cary Grant, Sophia Lauren. You have to change agents. You have to, I don't, all I wanted to do was go to the ballpark and play ball. 
Now, do you feel do you feel like your uh, I just do you feel like your agent or and or managers uh, that you might have had when you were a kid were they giving you good advice or bad advice? I had or? I had a couple that were good, and then I had a couple because you know what they were, uh, what you were to them. They got ten percent yeah. from their adult actors. You were their meal ticket. Yeah, uh, you got ten percent from your child actors. So you were the same ten percent that they. You know, they never, uh, uh, and they had so many clients, they never took the time to say, you know, maybe I need to spend, a, maybe I need to go over to Charlie's house just to see, meet his parents and, and, and find out because he's, uh, the adults are on their own. You know, but the children, I, I, I you know, may, I want to see what he's, you know, what his life is like. You know, nobody ever came over to, to, to the house and if they came over, they would have been, with unannounced, they would have been shocked to see uh, the living conditions that I had to live under. Wow. Do you have any recollection of the producer, William Castle? About William Castle? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when I heard that, uh, although I wasn't very involved in my career, but when I, uh, he, when I went to, before I did the fly, I had to meet him. And he brought me in uh, in his office, just me and him. He asked my mother to leave, and just me and him. And uh, he told me he saw me in the fly and then uh, houseboat or whatever. And he wanted me so bad. He he's the one that told me, I'm going to give you the starring role because I think you're perfect for this movie. And you and not only that, but he also made sure that I understood you seem like a nice kid. You seem like you're well-mannered. You have a good reputation in the business as being a nice person. And that, to me, is the greatest compliment any human being can ever give any another human being. Not that you're intellectual, not that you're talented or whatever, but being a nice person is the best compliment anybody can ever give you. And it's not easy being a nice person. Not everybody can be a nice person, but that's the greatest compliment any human being can give another human being. I think that's great. Anybody else? Yeah, I think you're right. I thank you very much. Well, hey, well, thanks very much, Charles. And really I love these shows. One more thing. Yeah. I love these shows because one of the things is when I meet the people that come up to see me, I told you, I never thought you'd, any of you would ever remember me. You wouldn't <laughs> know who I was uh, from, from the man on the street. Uh, and to have you respond the way that you do, uh, whether you buy a picture or not, although I would appreciate it if you buy a picture, but uh, <laughs> the things that you say really are really appreciated. Well, thanks very much, Charles, for coming out. It Thank was you. great talking to you.